I am Claude Dauphin, and I want to tell you a little about our offering. What you're about to see is a dramatization of a short story by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Now, most people think of Conan Doyle in connection with his adventures of Sherlock Holmes, but Sir Arthur was also the author of many historical stories and novels distinguished by, by a rousing spirit of adventure and sardonic humor. And it is in this lesser known but highly enjoyable style that we bring you our story. Drink, drink my little violet. Drink my darling. To the full, Mademoiselle. <coughs> Mademoiselle lives here in, in Reims. Your pardon, monsieur. I do not speak so well your language. I am personal maid to la Comtesse d'Angers. I am Sophie Tukovska. Uh, 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 Russian. Yes, but do not dislike me for that. I have lived always in the houses of the French. <laughs> you show admirable taste, Mademoiselle. Permit me. I am uh, Brigadier Etienne Girard, the best soldier in the whole army of Napoleon. <laughs> you are acquainted with the Emperor? But intimately, mademoiselle. How wonderful. <laughs> my humble thanks for the refreshment. But my pleasure. Uh, <clears throat> you are, uh, you're perhaps free in the evening? Oh, yes. When I've dressed my mistress and she goes to sup, then I am free, yes. Ah. It would be possible for you to meet me later? Without you. A little rendezvous, perhaps? Yes, the noch haroshi me vestretim sa podubo. Na yesi budjidosh, togda me vestretim sa saraya. I am so sorry when I do not think I lapse into Russian. <laughs> but it, it sounded very pretty. <clears throat> what was it you said? If the night is fine, we'll meet under the oak tree. But if it rains, we'll meet in the barn. Excellent. <laughs> but say it again, in Russian, just for me. Yes, li noc haroshia, mi vestret himsa podubo. Na yes li budjidosh. Tugda, mi vestret himsa svaraya. Oh, God! Oh, Brigadier, what a Russian you would make. But I told you I'm already the, the best soldier in, in the whole army of Napoleon. Of course, of course you are. <laughs> Till tonight, my mother. Tonight. Brigadier Gerard. Yes, Major Charpentier. I've been looking for you everywhere. The Emperor wants to see us at once. Napoleon wishes to see you. Did I not tell you that we are on intimate terms? <laughs> Napoleon. Togda me vestrechemsha saraya. To the Emperor! Your sword, Berthier. Now here you see, Berthier, the Valley of the Meuse. And here, Berlin. Sire, the officers you sent for. You have not yet received the Cross of Honor, Brigadier Girard? I have not, Your Imperial Majesty. <clears throat> but I, I assure you, it's not... And you, way. Major Charpentier? No, sire. Then you shall both have your opportunity now. Come. I shall be frank with you, gentlemen, as with two comrades, 
Uh, after all, I believe you've both been with me since uh, Marengo, is it? <clears throat> Here we are at Reims, our present headquarters. Here is Paris, distant by road a good 25 leagues. The Prussian army occupies the north under Blücher to the south under Schwarzenberg. Now, the more these Prussians invade into the countryside, the more completely I shall crush them. <clears throat> they are about to advance on Paris. Good, very good. Let them. My brother Joseph, the king of Spain, will be there with 100,000 men. <clears throat> it is to my brother I send you. You will hand him this letter, copies of which I confide to each of you. It tells him that I am coming at once with every man and horse and gun for his relief. You understand me, gentlemen? You will ride together as far as Bazoche. You will then separate. You, Major Charpentier, making for Paris by Ulchy and Neuilly. You, Brigadier Girard, to Paris by Brain, Soissons, and saint lys you have anything to say, Brigadier Girard? <clears throat> you, your Imperial Majesty, it pleases me to risk my life for the glory and peril of my Emperor and France. Major Charpentier? If our route appears unsafe, are we at liberty to choose another? Soldiers do not choose, they obey! The interview is at an end. All that afternoon, we galloped on towards Bazoche. Every pounding of my dear little Violet's hooves seemed to echo Napoleon, Napoleon. Long live the Emperor! My heart sang as I spurred Violet on. I've never been friendly with Charpentier, and today he was more uncommunicative than ever, seeming to be lost in scowling thoughts of his own. Well, Major, it is here we part. What do you make of it, Brigadier? Of what? Mission, of course. Surely it is plain enough. You think so? Why should the Emperor tell us his plans? Because he has recognized our intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask what you intend to do if you find these villages full of Prussians? I shall obey my orders. But you'll get killed! Very possibly. I will have had the honor of giving my life for my emperor. <laughs> I could waste no thoughts on so unworthy a creature as Charpentier and turn my little Violette on the road I would take. All through the night I raced, borne by my trusty little Violette. I would, at all costs, fulfill my mission. Then I thought of his poor mother, and I dropped my aim to his shoulder. My little Violet was growing weary. I knew that soon I would be forced to give her a rest. I had almost reached Saint-Lys when I looked up, and my heart leaped. There was an old French soldier. Brigadier Girard. I recognized him at once. Old Bouvet, 
with whom I had fought at Leipzig. Bouvet, my old friend. What in the world are you doing here? The Emperor has entrusted me with a mission. I am on my way to Paris. But why this way? There are only Prussian and Cossack here. I prefer to go where the enemy is. Don't be such a hot-headed young fool. Go straight to Paris with your dispatch. Why to go through Saint-Lys, where you're almost sure to be taken or killed? Is Saint-Lys truly occupied? There was a poke of Cossack occupying the mayor's house down there. But they have just been chased out by a squadron of our poles. Then the, the mayor's house is, is now unoccupied. For the moment. But the Cossack will return. And you know, the mayor is known to have the best seller of cheeses and spiced meat in this part of France. <clears throat> Look, my old Bouvet, I think my little Violet needs a rest. Uh, why, why don't you and I go down to the mayor's house and learn for ourselves how good a table the mayor sets? Uh, An excellent idea, my boy. But we must be ready to fly at a moment's notice because at any instant, the Cossack may return. Quietly, we entered the mayor's house. It was easy to see that the Cossacks had been here. Their everlasting vandalism was everywhere apparent. Bouvet knew the way to the cellar and wasted no time in leading me to it. They have beaten us here too, my boy. The Cossack is coming back, running for your life. There was no use denying it. I was trapped. I cursed my stupidity. But then, I looked around me. Most cellars, I remember, had a trap door leading to the yard. There was a door, however. It was slightly ajar. My eyes couldn't be deceiving me, for now, it was gently closing. Someone was behind the door. Well, whoever was there would soon find he had no chicken to deal with. I assure you, whoever was on the other side was holding the door shut. Sir, I surrender myself on a promise of quarter. But if I don't have your promise, I will then sell my life as dearly as I can. I understand, sir. It is quite obvious. The French, with their dreadful poles, have retaken the town. <clears throat> you're, you're very observant, sir. <laughs> but a Frenchman knows how to treat an unfortunate enemy. Your life is safe. I have my thanks. And uh, <clears throat> whom have I the honor of capturing? I am the Count Butkin of the Emperor's own Don Cossacks. Brigadier Girard of Napoleon's army. Ah, uh, yes. And, uh, <clears throat> may I ask uh, how you come to be here in this cellar? I came down to sample the food, but then the Poles attacked. My comrades flew. I waited here till it was safe, only to be trapped by you. I could hardly believe my good fortune. Clearly, the fellow didn't realize that his own comrades had returned 
that I was the one in danger, not he. And then, suddenly, there came to me an idea. Count Butkin, I find myself in the most difficult position. Why is that? Because I've promised you your life. You would not withdraw your promise. I gave you the word of the finest soldier in Napoleon's army. I am completely in your hands. Would you suggest that I remain here? Oh, that would be the worst of all. Presently, the, the house will be ransacked. They will find you and cut you to pieces. No, no, I must go and break it to them. But even then, when once they see your, your accursed uniform, you know, I, I don't know what may happen. Should I then take off the uniform? Excellent. No, no, I have it. You take off your uniform and put on mine. That will make you sacred to every French soldier. I will ascend in your uniform. A hundred swords will be turned upon me. Hold! I will shout. I am Brigadier Girard. <laughs> they will see my face. They will know me. I will tell them about you. And under the shield of my uniform, you will be sacred. <laughs> my friend, how can I thank you? <laughs> And so we exchanged uniforms. I didn't forget to change my precious letter to its place next to my heart. The Count suggested that I bind him to a barrel, and I willingly assented. After all, I didn't want him after me should he suddenly realize how he'd been duped. We parted amiably, and I left him to ponder his own error. Look, one of those fierce Cossacks. They steal everything. That horse has a French saddle. Careful, careful. He might understand us. Good evening, comrade. Trogda, Vestremsuya, Svaraya, Dost. You see, he doesn't speak anything but Russian. We are safe. I wonder what it was he said. He probably told us to mind our own business. Onward again to Paris, we galloped, my Violet and I. And then, straight ahead of me, I saw him. A Cossack officer, even bigger than Count Butkin. And he suspected something. It was because I ride like the fearless Frenchman I am. <laughs> Down he went with a groan and mighty crash. And Violet and I again were on our way in the service of the Emperor. It was just past noon when we neared the post outside Paris. The glorious tricolor fluttered in the breeze. I could see a noble French soldier looking up at me. Long live the Emperor! Long live Napoleon! No, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. I am in the service of the Emperor. I'm the Brigadier Girard. You are one of us? But of course, did I not just tell you? I am the celebrated Brigadier Girard. <clears throat> Look, I have a, a dispatch for the, the Emperor's brother, the King of Spain, from the hands of the Emperor himself.
Your Majesty, from your brother, the Emperor of all France. What do you make of it, Monsieur de Talleyrand? Your Majesty, I am confounded. Were you the only messenger? No, there was one other, sir. Uh, Major Charpentier of the Horse Grenadiers. He has not yet arrived. Oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's to us that such commissions should be entrusted. Us? You and... Violette is my horse. A dear little mare. <laughs> Thank you, Brigadier. I would suggest you acquire the proper Hussar's uniform. And when you and Violette are refreshed, return to my brother in wrath. Your Majesty, I am your obedient servant. <laughs> Next morning early, Violet and I set off by a safe and shorter route to return to the camp of the Emperor. Sire, it is the Brigadier Gerard. He's returned. What? What the deuce are you doing here? I have the honor to report, sire, that I have delivered the dispatch safely to your brother, the King of Spain. What? It is through your Imperial Majesty. The mission with which you entrusted me has been accomplished. What should become of Charpentier? He was captured. By whom? B by the Russians. The Cossacks? No, a single Cossack. He gave himself up? Without resistance. He is an intelligent officer. You will see that he is awarded the Medal of Honor. As to you, you brain of a hare, what do you think you were sent on this mission for? Do you conceive that I would send a really important message by such a hand as yours through every village that the enemy holds? How you came through them passes my comprehension. But if your fellow messenger had had as little sense as you, my whole plan of campaign would have been ruined. Can't you see, you simpleton, that the message contained false news, which was intended to deceive the enemy, while I put a very different scheme into execution? Sire, when you are dealing with a man like me, you would find it wiser to deal openly. I had known that, that you wanted the dispatch to fall into the hands of the enemy. I, I would have seen that, that it came there. As I believed that I was to guard it, I would have sacrificed my life for it. I don't believe, sire, that any man in the world ever met with such danger as I did in trying to carry out what I thought was your will. I will go now. By your leave, sire. One moment. There, there. Forget anything I may have said in haste. You're right. I would have been better to trust you. You will see that the Brigadier Gérard is awarded the special Medal of Honor. For I believe that even if he has the thickest head, he has also the stoutest heart in my army. Never did a medal shine more brilliantly than mine. Never did a medal shine, as the Emperor himself admitted, over so stout a heart. And there was one in particular I wanted to have seen me tonight. After all, did I not have a rendezvous with little Sophie? 